Will debates matter in this campaign? Dimitri Soudas is a former director of communications to Prime Minister Stephen Harper. Rudy Husney is a former leadership candidate and former advisor to Prime Minister Harper. Hello to both of you. Good to see you, Rudy. Great to have you in studio here. I'll, I'll start with you on that basic question. Let's just start there. Do debates matter in this campaign? Because there's another few coming up starting next week. Yes, it matters because it's, there's, there's actually two games. There's the game in the room of what they're going to say and after how they're going to use it for their social media and to basically convey their message afterwards to key members. So they basically, everybody have their list of sound bites, the key message that they want out. And it's a game of when you're going to be able to actually you know, uh, being able to convey them. And after all the recording that goes after for the following days and even weeks of reusing those sound bites, those clips, to make sure that all members are going to make sure that they know what exactly what you stand for and what you want to bring in this race. And for other candidates like Scott Aitchison or Roman Barber, who are they? What they want? Why are they in their race? What are they fighting for? So for the, this is basically the dynamic, and that's why debates are important. Uh, Dimitri, you've strategized for debates in a leadership and a general election. Uh, focusing in on the, the kind of debate you'd strategize for in a, in a leadership race, what kind of advice would you give to uh, Pierre Polyev versus, let's say, a Scott Aitchison? I think that's an excellent question, Vashi. Um, you know, and, and I would respectfully kind of beg to differ because leadership race debates are, are substantially different from general election debates. Uh, it's like expecting my son Theodore, who is a diehard Leafs fan, to go watch the Leafs play against the Habs and after the game become a Habs fan. Um, <laughs> usually in leadership debates, uh, you have supporters and, and leadership debates get very heated and we're seeing it in this race. So for, for somebody like me, Mr. Aitchison or Mr. Babber, for example, who, who are probably distant third, fourth or fifth right now, it is their opportunity to clearly communicate what they stand for uh, and motivate their base and potentially pick up some new support. Mr. Polyev, on the other hand, who is clearly seen as the front runner, has to hold off on the attacks. And what we should expect to see today is everybody going after Mr. Poiliev because he is the front runner. So short of a knockout or a grand slam, it's going to be great to watch, but don't expect it to A, sell too many new membership cards or switch too many votes. On that idea, uh, Rudy, of everyone kind of targeting the, front, the, the perceived front runner, do, do you think that's what's bound to happen as well? And, and I should say, I'm, I'm referencing this debate because it's happening right now, but the English debate is next week in the sort of more official one that the party's putting on is next week in Edmonton, and then I think the next one's in Laval. Is it Laval? Yeah, yes, in La yes. The French one's yes. in Laval. Yes. Yeah. So actually, what is interesting is that Jean Charest said it himself. He said, I'm the underdog. So I believe that he will want to go and show. And we know that Jean Charest has, you know, a, a fighting spirit. So it will be really interesting to see what kind of strategy, what kind of attacks he's going to use. Obviously, when you're the front runner, as, as Dimitri said, you know, you, you want to make sure that you take sometimes the high road because you, you want to convey your message, but you know that people are going to attack you. So you have to be a little bit on the defensive side. But knowing a little bit, Monsieur Polièvre, it will be interesting to see if he's going to be able to, to stay calm and not take the deba debate, especially when if, if Mr. Charest is able to get some, you know, uh, nice attacks in. That will be the challenge because we know how he is in, you know, in debates in the House of Commons. So it will be a very interesting dynamic. And just to end, it will also be interesting to see when the third candidate, uh, because I believe it's sometimes two or three, when are they going to jump in right. and when are they going to let them speak? That will be the message for the second votes. Dimitri, what about who's not there? Patrick Brown. Do you think, uh, you know, his campaign, as I mentioned in the introduction there, says it's because he's, uh, he's in other parts of the country working on the membership side of things. What do you think about that reasoning? And, and do you think it's to his uh, advantage or disadvantage not to be there tonight? Well, it is important to note, as you mentioned, Vashi, that this is not a party-sanctioned debate, so it's not actually an official debate. So I would give the gold star to Patrick Brown today. He's in Atlantic Canada, touring the Maritimes uh, and, and focusing on selling membership. So, and, and I don't know if I'm right. It's just an opinion. But again, uh, if the premise that this leadership debate, it's going to be great to watch, uh, but it's not going to move votes or sell new memberships, uh, I would say that Mr. Brown probably made the wisest decision today. 
I want to ask you both just quickly before we go about some of the other issues percolating. And the first, Rudy, is around the three candidates who were rejected this week. And there's some more extensive reasoning provided, but but a few of them are saying we shouldn't have been. We raised the money. We had the signatures. We don't really understand why we were disqualified. Is that a problem for the party going forward? Or, or t- from your vantage point, did they make the right call? No, I, I believe from the information, I think the party was clear that they didn't meet the, the threshold. And it's very te- technical. You know, sometimes you sign up a member and he thinks that he's a member, but it hasn't been 21 days, for example, or maybe he didn't renew it on time. And also for the financing, sometimes maybe, you know, some people, they, they give to multiple candidates and after it, it, it's, it's too much. So I think those are the reasons. I don't have any insight into it. But I believe uh, there's no reason, and I think the party was clear that it wasn't on their belief or their action. No, so they've been very clear that it's on the process, and I trust the party on that. Uh, Dimitri, uh, just before I go, I I also wanted to ask you, this debate is uh, put on by, the, as I said, the Canada, uh, I think it's Strong and Free Network, or Free and Strong Network, which used to be the Manning Center, essentially like a conservative think tank. My guess is it's going to be a little bit friendlier of an audience, or friendlier uh, maybe of the the moderators, I'm not sure, we'll we'll have to judge it by how it goes, but next week in that party-sanctioned one, it's my colleague Tom Clark, Uh, they have, my understanding is, you know, he has full kind of jurisdiction over the format, the questions, everything. Uh, Do you anticipate a little difference there? And might that sort of bigger issue that this week south of the border that everyone's uh, talking about to one degree or another around abortion, do you think that ends up factoring in in a way the candidates uh, maybe don't want to see or, uh, you know, aren't happy to see? Well, first of all, any debate hosted by Tom Clark is a debate worth watching. 100%. Uh, as, as, as I remember my interactions with Tom, he's going to be tough and fair. Uh, in terms of this abortion debate that's been sprung on us because of the leak by the Supreme Court uh, in the United States, uh, it, it is the party's traditional Achilles heel. Uh, what's very different this time is that the front runners, or at least the front runner, Mr. Poliev, and those chasing after him, Mr. Charest and, and Mr. Brown, um, are all pro-choice. Um, It's going to be interesting how the different candidates try and use this matter, if they try to use it. For example, is Mr. Poiliev going to go after Mr. Charest because Mr. Charest was in Mr. Mulroney's cabinet in 1991 when they voted on legislation uh, in regards to abortion? Is Mr. Charest going to go after Mr. Poiliev because Mr. Poiliev has more pro-life MPs that support him? Uh, Piece of advice? Stay away from this topic. It's never a winner. (laughs) Okay, on that note, we'll end it there. Thanks so much, both of you. Great to have you back with us, Dimitri Soudis and Rudy Hasny. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.